Good morning, friends. Welcome to another Word of Gord. OBE Journal 2018, number four. Early in the morning, a little after five. I woke up a while ago uh, with a strong vision, memory of uh, showing a friend around an area where I grew up, uh, uh, an, an area that was um, countryside on the edge of the city that I used to cycle to as a teenager and have fun. Uh, perhaps on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, I think uh, the person that I was showing was uh, one of the uh, followers of this video series. And um, I think I'll be a little enigmatic and not say who it is. But um, there were other things going on last night. And, uh, you know, I think it was one of those uh, nights where, nights here, not nights there. And uh, one of those nights where you do a number of uh, things on your social rounds, as it were. And... Uh, that just happened to be the most recent, as it were. But presently, I feel an, an impulse, shall we say, to uh, move on up that Jacob's ladder of consciousness. Uh, that ever-expanding uh, field of vision that uh, unfolds when one moves through the planes and uh, becomes aware of more and more as one does so. On the initial expansion, one seems to be, you know, looking down on one's dwelling. I happen to live in a small house. It's the same if you live in an apartment, though, or a section of a house. You're above the building, you're looking down. And you can either marvel at the image, or that sort of... Uh, almost unearthly glow that uh, objects and structures have when you're uh, uh, you know out of out of body looking at things you get used to it after a while and don't, don't always see it but um it's there it's always there some writers call it the etheric glow the etheric aura um it's an energy bar. It's an energy sort of state, and um, as I say, one gets used to it. Some of you ask questions about the antikarana, the cord that connects you, uh, the silver cord for some. It seems to be a perpetual uh, state of. Uh, curiosity about it because uh, many people don't see it at all and you can examine uh, surveys in the older literature that's 50 100 years old and even there some people see it and some people don't for me it's uh, an example of how unless you're tuned in exactly to a certain vibration and everyone's onto karana has one like, you know, you're tuning through the uh, the dial on the radio 
unless you tune exactly into a radio station, you're not going to hear it. And uh, manifestation of anything in spirit has a certain vibration. And um, for example, saintly uh, beings, beings who have evolved to a condition of saintliness or angelic status, they're, they're, they're going at a very high vibration to get there. And it's quite easy not to see them, even if they're right there. Especially if you're in the lower, lower astrals, never see them. Unless the being of, you know, who has graduated to unconditional love for all, um, they consciously lower their vibration in order to be seen. Anyway, um, it's all about vibration. And um, for those of you who wonder about these things, and I know it's been brought up on message boards and conversation boards that I participate in, um, that's the reason. You're just not tuning into that specific vibration. And you don't have to. You're on your way somewhere to do certain things and have certain experiences. If you don't see the silver cord, or what, what's traditionally called the Anta Karana, um, don't worry about it. It's there whether you see it or not. And it's there whether you want it or not. <laughs> So moving on up to maybe the next level, um, you're hovering over your neighborhood or your town or your village or, you know, the rural area on which your uh, home is placed. There's a sense of uh, embracing the landscape, embracing the cityscape. And... Uh, if you pause, there's a sense of feeling the hmm, life energies, vibrations, emotions, thoughts of all the uh, sleeping humans below you. And uh, that can be absorbed and transmuted into something else, into a greater a more powerful energy that will help propel you onward. Again, it's a matter of choice. You can sort of just have the image, see it, and not particularly, how shall I say, tune into it. If, uh, if it's early days of conscious travel for you, the excitement of astral travel will dominate. And um, such is the nature of the astral body, the body of emotions, that the uh, newness and excitement of it all will dominate. But as you get more used to it and more accustomed to that uh, level of vibration, it will seem like well, normal. So, hovering over the neighborhood, the locality, the suburb, the town, the village. You get a sense of the group consciousness, even if you can't put your finger on a way to describe it, you do get a feeling for it. And uh, sometimes you get uh, a strong sense of a particular individual's state of consciousness. Um, sometimes uh, those who are out and about late at night, early in the morning, you pick up their vibration. Whether they're uh, partiers coming home, criminals venturing abroad, 
<laughs> to get after their nefarious activities. Uh, people heading out early to work. You can pick up all that sort of thing. Some people have told me they swoop through uh, gardens and uh, get a sense and sometimes a vision of nocturnal animals. Uh, going about their business. Uh, I think some raccoons knocked over some of my potted plants in the garden just the other night, but I didn't quite catch them at it. I was off doing something else. The next level, the next area of focus that you're going to move on to is the astral plane. You're going to move from hovering like a ghost in the physical plane to uh, entering the astral plane. And there are many levels in which you can enter. Some dark, some shadowy, some lighted, some radiant. But here you are in the realm of not sleeping people, but dead people. Some of who have been dead a very short time and are still in the, uh, shall we say, the grip of transiting. They're transiting without assistance, as many are, because they're uh, experiencing the karma of their materialist outlook on life. And... Uh, because they don't believe there's an afterlife, they don't know what to do or where to go. And they sort of bump about trying to figure things out, sometimes in a state of denial, sometimes in a state of, oh my God, what's this? Um, or a state of mental analysis. It's the, uh, the dying gasp of, neuron activity in my brain that is producing these queer little visions and these notions that there are others around when I know full well that are not. So, um, yeah, you can run into a lot of those, especially in the, in the uh, how shall I say, <laughs> developed West, where... Uh, religious belief systems and spiritual understanding are at a minimum. Other parts of the world, you will uh, find people, if, if you choose to explore those areas, who are following their the dictates of their religion and have no doubt about it, and will very quickly be in one of the religious heavens, you know, um, experiencing what they expect to experience. Whether it be, you know, Muslim or Hindu or Rastafarian or, uh, you know, any number of subsects of those uh, major umbrellas. So as you find yourself in one or other of the uh, levels or sub-levels uh, or intermediate levels, there are many intermediate levels, just different neighborhoods really, um, but that's a way of, a traditional way of putting it, um, you will um, be aware of the consciousness, the generalized consciousness of uh, those who are inhabiting those areas. Some of them are passing through quickly and others see are sort of plonked there semi-permanently because they uh, either have a comfort level or uh, a semblance of a comfort level 
shaded by a fear to move on. Um, there's a number of uh, vari variations there. And if you approach spirits on those on the on that level, which you find yourself, you will notice that uh, they share a certain um, outlook. Well, different, but you know it's like attracts like. And um, on some levels, a sort of a suspicious paranoia, for example. On others, there's a sort of narrow-minded grumpiness because um, the surroundings aren't very pleasant and uh, that reflects the consciousness of the, the person that's there but they think it's uh, objective, it's out there and they've been thrust into it unwillingly and they uh, are not happy about it and uh, express that dissatisfaction quite willingly. And um, whether you choose to engage with them or um, just indulge them and move on is, is up to you. It's rather like uh, being on a road trip here on, on, the, on Earth. And uh, as you stop in various places to refuel or sleep or, you know, have a meal, you will notice that certain towns and villages have a certain atmosphere. And you might think, hmm, uh, and ponder on why they have that atmosphere and think, oh, what happened to this lot? Why are they all so, uh, you know, grumpy? But uh, or aggressive or you know what you know smart alecky or you know distrustful of strangers, um, and it's the same on the astral. There are area, you know areas in the lower astral where you notice people harassing and arguing with each other, at the at the drop of a hat, and. Um, They've been obnoxious, querulous, uh, antisocial when they were here, and they just continue it on there. And uh, again, they think they've been thrust into an unpleasant atmosphere when in fact they are self-guided. They are vibrating at the level of the surroundings and those who are in the surroundings already again very like attracts like although because uneducated spirits spirits they have no interest in the afterlife when they were here or denied it completely um, they have no understanding that they're creating their reality by uh, creating their inhabiting a certain personal reality they're creating or co-creating a reality around them and um, you know you might feel very messianic and try to explain that to some of them uh, you'll find that most of them won't accept it but you know you can give it a go if you feel up to it it will work once in a while you will shed a little light um, but it can, it can be fairly frustrating. You'll get into a lot of arguments. You might find yourself in the mid or upper astral where beautiful landscapes abound. Uh, marvelously uh, radiant valleys with all kinds of uh, vegetation and uh, forests, small ones, big ones, 
rivers, uh, all the beauties of nature in, in the various guises that we know from, you know, the various uh, types of landscapes around the world, tropical, subtropical, uh, uh, how can I put it? Um, shades of spring, summer, winter. Um, it's all represented there that our uh, astral archetypes of all type, all kinds of landscapes. And I wouldn't even try to list them. There's far too many. And there are mixtures because people can, in the mid and upper astrals, people are quite creative with their thoughts and can consciously create mixtures. Um, Depend, you know, some of those mixtures depend on their travels on Earth and their uh, 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 memories of past lives. And they, they blend in uh, various things in a, a sort of a eccentric, creative fashion. And you will have much uh, joy in, in, in discovering that because it is quite, um, how shall we say, unsurpassingly beautiful and uh, you can just st stare at things and think you know how marvelous how lucky I am to be here I wish I could share it with so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so. and um, uh, the beauty can uh, you know completely distract you from what you thought you might be doing and uh, Oh, I forgot to do such and such, or I forgot to go see so and so, and um, that's that's the beauty of the astral plane. You may find yourself in an astral city, as I know many of you have, and uh, floating around, amazed at the uh, fabulous architecture, uh, which is you know because of uh, the unfettered. Uh, expression of the imagination and creativity uh, and the uh, lack of uh, gravity and uh, absence of cost um, anything can be built and sustained and you will see marvelous uh, shapes of structures that you will not see here and uh, the uh, astral cities of uh, the astral plane are filled with uh, what I would call busy happy people and you will find that out for yourself as you move among them and uh, just in amazement really and uh, a lot of them will sense that you are a sleeping person out moving around. Um, but they may be busy enough with their own lives. And people do get that way after getting settled. They develop a new life, uh, a partial family, a community, communities of shared interests. Um, and they're saddled with the fact that some of their loved ones are there, already passed over, and others are still here. That initial period of uh, grieving, mourning, missing people is uh, overcome. And they understand implicitly that um, those they have left behind will be arriving at some point or other and uh, they settle themselves to enjoy the beauties and wonders and joy of this continued life where they are still the same person that they were on earth um, same character same looks often unless they wish to change their looks um, uh, the same person living 
the second half of the life or the incarnation and uh, exploring and enjoying the activities that they either couldn't on earth or that they started on earth and couldn't seem to finish and that's any kind of activity any kind of uh, expression of human creativity that you might do here on earth is continued there in a much more unfettered form anything from uh, you know carpentry to uh, metalworking to interior design to uh, singing in a choir um, painting sketching gardening you know many many I'm just naming a few here I mean you can study engineering over there if you want you can um, uh, anything that you can do in school here you can do in school there either uh, as uh, an independent finding your way or attending classes language studies anything at all And in many astral communities, you will find people who are just basically enjoying their lives it's, and see it as a kind of a deluxe retirement. And uh, that's fine, too. They have, uh, there's many souls who have tired of the troubled nature of our world. And who can blame them for that? And wish to just leave it all behind and forget it. And especially, you know, people who have uh, passed passed through and out of uh, uh, troubled societies and war zones, they are more than glad to be away. And they don't even care to think about where they've come from and what the meaning of their life is in that uh, in that war zone. It's later much later that they might uh, re-examine their birth choices, their pre-birth choices. And uh, not even everyone does that. Some people reincarnate without uh, re-examining that. They're young souls, they, they rush about uh, without, uh, you know, slowly and carefully considering their options. And of course, suffer from that carelessness. But you know, sometimes several lives pass are passed in that fashion, and um, eventually they get the uh, they get the understanding that these things should be planned out carefully. But it takes a while, a while in eternity, which is really no time at all. And so, yeah, as an out of body traveler, you can whiz through what I just described in a few, a minute or two, and pick up all those perceptions and thoughts. Uh, you may not digest them properly, if, if one can put it that way, but you will pick them up. Uh, often as one whizzes about, you, 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 pick, you, you flash on this, you flash on that, and you go, oh, I get that, right, no, I understand that. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to remember when you wake up in the morning. but Or even when you wake up in the middle of the night, like I just did. Um, but you will still um, have that absorbed into your being. And uh, then if you happen to uh, listen to something like this, or read a book by myself or someone like me, or an article, or, you know, whatever, and certain points are expressed and you feel an immediate uh, understanding or harmony with that point, you go, oh yeah, I know that. That's why. You don't have trouble accepting it because you did experience it and you did absorb it on a maybe semi-conscious level, but you did bring it into your databanks of understanding. And reading about it or hearing about it later uh, illuminates that.
it is quite possible, and some of you I know have done this, um, to move beyond the astral plane into the mental plane, causal plane, where you will meet more, much more evolved, refined spirits. That's if you even see them at all. And um, they are uh, still very active, but their activities are more uh, harder to define and sort of bottle and categorize. You know they're up to something. Now, what, what is it exactly? I mean, they're very loving, beautiful, shining beings, but uh, their activities are, you know, they may not care to speak of them. They may just uh, care to uh, radiate love to you. And, and that in itself is, is a marvelous thing when you're existing on that level. It's like, it's like being blessed, you know, by a saint or an angel. And um, for them, that is enough. And as you float through those levels, as you drift through, that may be enough for you. It can be quite overwhelming if they are highly evolved beings. Blissfully overwhelming, I don't mean threatening. Um, so <clears throat> that's... And when you're at that level, if you take time to contemplate or, you know, meditate, <clears throat> you're above all the levels that I just described. And you can see them all or envision them all or project them all. And uh, you get the big picture. And the big picture is all these souls at various levels of evolvement, um, exploring their levels, experiencing their uh, actions, experiencing their relationships, um, coming to greater and greater harmonies with that which is around them and those which, with which they interact with whom they interact. You can observe all of this in your mind's eye, if you like, if you want to use that metaphor, the mind's eye, or the, uh, to use the old traditional phrase, anima mundi, the spirit of the world. Um, you can observe that as one of the uh, mansions and in which uh, the so-called creator has provided many houses. I say so-called creator not because I don't believe in a creator. I, uh, I feel it more as a creative spirit. Uh, marvelously large all-encompassing creative spirit which animates the universe rather than creates it from nothing. It constantly animates it and always has done. There's never been a time when it didn't exist. I don't believe in big bangs or starts and finishes. But, you know, I'm not about to sit down here and try to prove it. Um, and all Obviously, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, whether you, I mean, even if the universe does end, it's not going to be anytime soon. <laughs> it's going to be way off in the distance. But for me, I don't believe in distances and, and, and time. Time is a, a creation of uh, those who planned out planets and incarnations in on which to have experiences and evolve. Time and space are necessary structures in order for those uh, situations to unfold. They, they were imagined, they were fashioned at a certain point. But um, there is an eternity beyond time and space and that was not created. That, that is 
and always was and always will be. But the various uh, planets and physical planes are creations. And uh, we talked about monads yesterday. Some uh, evolved beings, some of them for other, from other planetary systems, were brought here to create the Earth life system, the planet and the, the spheres around it for a different, unique experience. And then other monads, higher selves, were invited to come and populate. Populate with the uh, energies which are part of their being. And you and I are part of those monads, part of those beings. And I definitely have uh, memories of when the monad to which I appear to belong came to this planet uh, in response to an invitation. Tens of thousands of years ago, I suspect. But that's only for uh, <laughs> geologists and historians of culture and uh, societies and civilizations. They come and go. Civilizations do. They create themselves, they build up, they plateau out, and then they decay. <clears throat> and we could look at the, uh, the previous ones, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, whatever, and uh, Chinese, if you like, um, and observe their rise and fall. And uh, see those principles of rising and falling and apply it to the one that we're in now. And there's much uh, debate about what stage of decay we're in in the West, or are we even in a stage of decay at all? Uh, it's an endless debate, and um, perhaps uh, beyond the scope of this video. But when you're um, in the sort of formless, uh, high vibration spirit realms, you can certainly look back from where you have come, even if that journey was a matter of moments while your physical body was asleep, as we're discussing now. And you can see all the levels below you and understand the function of the activities on all those levels. They all have significance and usefulness and meaning. Whether people are being destructive or creative. And when you look at those things carefully, you can see that the cycles of destruction and creativity, culturally and personally, are inextricably linked. You can't have the creativity without the destructiveness. Fresh growth uh, has to occur when the old growth that has decayed has been destroyed. Whether that destruction happens slowly, as the sands of Egypt, for example, covering over what was previously a much more uh, verdant, productive landscape, uh, or the destructiveness of uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, wars. You can't have one. You can't have one side of the coin without the other. And uh, that is something that one can perceive and understand in that state, watching the uh, creativity and destructiveness below one, if one chooses to do so. And that perception can lead to an understanding that on these physical planes, ultimately, nothing really matters. Because every spirit, every soul, passes through those cycles of uh, destruction and uh, fresh creation many times. And we pass through it and out of it. So the uh, 
on one level, there is certainly uh, regret and grief and, you know, weeping and wailing and the gnashing of teeth. As uh, one uh, experiences the uh, destruction of one's attachments, <clears throat> whether to other humans or uh, societies, cultures, uh, communities. But um, you can also experience it as a blissful understanding of the uh, beautiful or terrible illusion of it all. We experience, we learn, we celebrate, we move on. And all that can be experienced on a not too extensive out-of-body trip when you're asleep, as I have just described. And um, I hope all of you experience that, either in part or in whole. And uh, that's the uh, that's the philosophizing for tonight. And I wish you all well, and I will talk to you soon.